now joined by Alan Mendoza, co-founder and executive director of the libertarian foreign policy think tank, the Henry Jackson Society. Uh, well, so, uh, as Andrew was saying there, we are very much, uh, we remain, I should say, in uncharted territory uh, because, you know, a great deal has been happening in the last few months, particularly since uh, Boris Johnson um, took over the premiership. Uh, now, given this latest blow with the Supreme Court ruling, should he resign? No, absolutely he shouldn't resign. I mean, I think um, the Supreme Court in the UK is about a decade old. Um, it hasn't been established as long as, say, Supreme Courts in other countries, the USA in particular. If you were to consider, for example, how um, the US president deals with the Supreme Court, you regularly have presidents, you know, ruled against in that court. No one expects them to resign in that case. But uh, we're not in the United States, no, are we? No, we're not. And this was a legitimate ruling on, on well, Boris Johnson's the US Supreme Court. action and the balance of power in this country. It's true, but the US Supreme Court also makes legitimate rulings on, you know, based on law as it interprets it. Um, on US presidents, for example, President Obama uh, didn't even achieve 50% success rate in his Supreme Court cases during his time. Here, we've got to look at this in the basis of we now have a more activist judiciary. Um, we have a strange situation in Parliament where we have no majority, so you have legislature against the executive. We're in a very American situation, and we need to consider it in that light right now. But uh, you're speaking as though much of this uh, wasn't necessarily in the control of the Prime Minister, but he made the decision, he alone made the decision to suspend Parliament. And so now we... You know, he, he is now in a situation where 60... After only 62 days in power, he has lost his battle with the Supreme Court. He uh, has lost MPs from his own party. Uh, he's lost six parliamentary votes. He's lost control of the House of Commons. Where does this leave his position? He seems to have completely lost control of the process. Well, he inherited this position. The reality is that his predecessor left him in a very difficult position after uh, two years of negotiations uh, over Brexit. Uh, what he has tried to do is chart a clear path towards leaving the European Union on uh, October the 31st. How has he tried to do that? By stating, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to do it at all costs. You're not given any details. I mean, most, no. most people in Westminster believe that while he says that he's negotiating in good faith, there haven't been any negotiations going on. The government's position is quite clear, that you get a deal with the European Union five minutes before midnight. The problem we're facing at the moment is that Parliament, and now it seems the uh, Supreme Court, are trying to extend midnight every time. Um, we're never getting to the well, five the minutes The Supreme Court decision moment. had nothing to do with, with Brexit. This was strictly about the, the action of sus the suspension of Parliament in, in the five weeks leading uh, up to the 31st as a, of as a matter of law, that's correct, but every Everyone recognises that this has got nothing to do necessarily with, with that narrow issue, with the broader issue that Parliament was actually prorogued around, which is in this case a Queen's speech to bring in a new measure. Now, that's been ruled um, unlawful. The government's going to have to come back, obviously, and uh, restate its agenda. It doesn't rule out, by the way, another prorogation later down the line. Would... Would he really consider that, given well, the decision that we've had today? What the Supreme Court has said is you can't prorogue Parliament beyond its normal course of activities. But there are moments when you can prorogue Parliament, for example, to bring in a Queen's speech or other measures in the, uh, in, in the statute book, where you can bring it in. So the question is obviously not to repeat this, but it doesn't mean that you can't have another suspension should it be required. The House of Commons has passed a law saying that it will not accept a, a no-deal Brexit and that there has to be some sort of agreement before the 31st of October, or there will be... Boris Johnson has to ask Brussels for an extension. Now, he has said that he will not do that. So, I mean, what's likely to happen there? How will he approach well, Brussels? Firstly, the issue, of course, is that this goes back to this five minutes before midnight point I made a moment ago. If you never get to five minutes before midnight, you'll never get a deal. What he's now trying to do, and we've seen, by the way, indications since the past weekend, that there is some movement. The Europeans are saying... Uh, John Calder Juncker has said that there might be a deal down the line. Yes, a long way to go, but we're seeing some positive action. Why, why would they offer him anything now? He has no authority o over Parliament. What they incentive want a deal. do they have? At the end have? of the day, the Europeans want a deal, just as we want a deal. The Prime Minister doesn't want to leave the European Union without a deal. He stated publicly on many occasions, deal is better than no deal. The Europeans believe the same thing. Both sides have an interest to get to that point. The question is, can they get to that point? Now, we won't know that if we never get near to that point. If you keep on extending this till ad infinitum then the Europeans and the British will never get to a point where we'll know if we get a deal or not. Alan Mendoza, thank you.